Coach, heading into the bye week, what's what's kind of job one for you guys to kind of get cleaned up before you prepare for Alabama? We have to be as sharp fundamentally as we can, you know, uh, really focused on fundamentals and details, you know, and I mean, really some of those things that uh, have been exposed that uh, we're not as sharp at as we need to be. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. It's just uh, complete work. And the better we are with those details, the more consistent we have a chance to be. John? Hey, Mike. Uh, just wanted to see if there was an update on uh, Kylan Hill's status uh, with the team. Uh, no, there's no update. He's uh, still unavailable dealing with uh, personal issues. So, um, yeah. And a, a quick follow-up to that. Uh, going back to the quarterback situation, you said after the game against A&M, you know, you'll take the bye to kind of evaluate and see between, you know, Will and KJ. What's kind of that process going to be like for you between those guys? Are they going to split reps? And what do you really want to see out of, uh, out of either of them to win that job? No, they'll split reps, and we'll see who moves the offense the best, you know. We'll go to Ben. Hey, Mike, was just curious. I know on Saturday, I think there were a couple of protesters that ran onto the field in the middle of the game. Were you able to see that at all? What was your kind of reaction to it? Uh, I didn't see much of it. Don't know what was being protested. Uh, it didn't know there was, there was even a protest. I, I, I don't know much about it. Um, Maybe you can elaborate on it because uh, I hadn't thought about it until uh, just now. And um, but uh, yeah, I, I did see some action out there between what, between quarters or something or timeout something. Anyway, I was kind of preoccupied. Joel, hey, coach. Uh, obviously, Gary announced today that he was uh, entering the portal. I was just curious what those what those conversations were like with, with Garrett Schrader and uh, just did you have any kind of message for, for him uh, before he entered the portal? No, not really. Uh, you know, I think Garrett uh, wants to play quarterback and, you know, and I, uh, you know, we wish him the best. I mean, he was a good teammate and we enjoyed having him. Steve. Coach, when you went back and reviewed the film, I mean, obviously things look better in hindsight, but uh, after you reviewed it, what kind of jumped out to you, both good and bad? Uh, the good was, is I thought we played hard, but we, uh, you know, we're again inconsistent and sloppy. I think that, uh, you know, you got uh, a and a real experienced team and they played like they were an experienced team. And then we have some inexperience and we played like that too. Um, you know, it was a fairly close game until the end, and, uh, you know, we had a chance to win it. We squandered some opportunities, no question about that. And, uh, you know, we have to shore that up and sharpen it up. Joel? When you go back and look at the film from this past week, and not just this past week, but the, the last couple of weeks, um, looking at the offensive line, is it a – I guess, how, how do you break that down, <clears throat> the struggles up front, and is it a deal where – the, the splits uh, with this new new offense for the guys is kind of confusing them a little bit, or is it just something else altogether? Just how, how do you break that down? Well, I think we missed – we did a couple things. One, we missed assignments. We missed way too many assignments. Uh, I think we've got to communicate better, and I think this week is uh, uh, definitely important to us uh, to do that because uh, we have to sharpen our communication. I think there's way too much indecision and – lack of communication with that, with that group and or there was the last game because uh, we have straight up run throughs and we have you know people there uh, to do it so you know I think we have to communicate it I think we have to uh, relax up there uh, communicate it and do our job and uh, we didn't do it cohesively and the thing is is you know what's most frustrating is we did throughout the week and then all of a sudden we go to the game and uh, all that breaks down and we play frantic. Tyler? <clears throat> yeah, Mike, going back to Schrader, I know you said he lagged behind uh, KJ and Will for most of camp, obviously, and he was losing that competition. Was that just as simple as him not being a good fit for your offense? And if that's the case, uh, what, what made him, uh, I don't want to call him a bad fit, but a worse fit than those two guys? Well, they outperformed him. They outperformed him, and uh, – and then, uh, you know, we felt like he'd make a great uh, uh, tight end. Still think that. 
uh, you know, but he's got other interests. So, you know, like I say, we wish him the best. I mean, uh, I don't really have any comments on him. I mean, he, uh, we wish him the best. And if he decides he wants to be a quarterback, uh, I uh, hope that works out for him. We'll go to Brian. Mike, when you talk about, you know, things going good in practice and then not translating the game, what is something that you as the head coach can do to sort of bridge that gap? We have to just keep coaching them, just keep coaching them. You know, it's one thing, you know, it, it starts out, you, you know, uh, do you understand it in the meeting? Can you draw it on the board? Then can you do it when you walk through? Then can you do it uh, in practice against scouts? And then can you do it uh, during the game? And I think that, uh, you know, we just haven't taken that other step. We'll go back to Ben. Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like Will got through his progressions a little bit quicker uh, on Saturday than KJ. How much of that is just, you know, his familiarity with this offense and kind of the type of offense that he ran in high school? And I guess how much did that help him in, in an off season when, you know, you guys didn't get spring ball and, and maybe some of those practices that you do normally get? That's difficult to say, but I think he's ahead of schedule for a freshman that's just gotten here. I don't think there's any question about that. I did think he operated efficiently. I think, uh, you know, one thing is he keeps things simple and doesn't try to make uh, too much happen and and hope he continues uh, down that path. We'll go back to Steve. <clears throat> Coach, some people suggest that uh, you, know, you kind of tiptoe around this thing and kind of uh, you know, tailor an offense perhaps around the talent that you have. Uh, but you seem to just kind of do what you do. What, what, what's your philosophy about that, especially when you take over a new program? I guess I don't totally understand the question. We've got an awful lot of people that haven't played, so there isn't a lot that's been tailored around them specifically uh, in an awful lot of cases. Um, but uh, learning something new, I mean, that's always, that's always a challenge. I think, I think we have two major challenges, teaching something new and then also um, elevating the experience of some of the guys we have and um, you know I mean the, the easiest way is to get older but the trouble is we don't have time to get older uh, so as coaches you know we need to uh, be as specific and clear as we possibly can in order to get the best performance out of these guys that we can. Joel? Just kind of a general question but obviously with three straight losses and uh, you know maybe with the whatever's going on with Kyla and things and just uh, just all of it together just kind of what's the general consensus the general mood right now at practice in the locker room uh what, where's kind of everybody's spirits in their head at right now yeah we seem pretty good we seem pretty good we're trying to you know the biggest thing is eliminate all distractions and just uh uh stick together and work hard and we've been doing that and uh you know, we got quite a few that are really excited about the fact that they're, you know, finally it's their time in their career to start. So there's a natural excitement around that. Okay, well, so they're excited about it. Um, they're excited about it. But, you know, we're still working towards the results to get even more excited about it. Because right now, you know, we don't have those kind of results. You know, we, we, we aren't uh, uh, consistently cohesive out there. We've got time for a few more. We'll go to Tyler. I know you said after the game the other night that this might be the most you've seen one of your offenses struggle, but I'm curious, other times that your offenses struggle, were you able to see drastic improvements within the course of a season, or do you kind of expect this to be a thing where it might be an uphill battle uh, you know, all the way throughout the rest of this season and you just got to kind of figure some things out you know, going into the next one? Uh, no, I think we'll improve, and I, th you know, and I think that we have improved. The other thing is, though, is other teams have improved as well, and then I think that uh, uh, we'll continue to improve. Uh, you know, where that takes us, I'm not sure, but um, you know, all, all anybody has is their best. I mean, you know, as, as coaches, we have to coach our very best. As players, we got to play our very best, and you know, it's really about as simple as that. And uh, you know, and then if, if we all do that, uh, then we'll keep improving. And if we continue to improve, uh, then we'll get better from one practice to the next, one play to the next, one year to the next, so it goes. And, you know, that's all we really have control over is, 
is just worrying about ourselves and being the best. You know, if you want to improve uh, the, the team as a coach or a player, you know, improve yourself. So, uh, you know, and, and, and that's what I think we all need to do. We have time for two more. We'll go Dalton. <clears throat> so I was looking at recruiting today and I noticed that y'all's the upcoming class, you know, top 35, top 40. How do you feel like this, this your first class in Mississippi State is kind of shaping up? Hard to say. I think there's a lot of recruiting to go, um, and it's a unique uh, circumstance with, uh, you know, the rules on visiting and that type of thing being what they are. Um, so, you know, we got to keep plugging away. Um, and I think, you know, like I say, I think the best is probably ahead. Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with the rules, the visits, and um, all the rest with recruiting and, and with regard to contact, because that's the most powerful thing you have in recruiting is contacts and visits. And so, um, you know, the strongest uh, resource you have, we don't have right now. Uh, so, you know, but uh, our guys have worked together hard on the recruiting effort and, uh, you know, we definitely need to have some good recruits in here. Gotcha. And you know, obviously <clears throat> talent's probably the biggest thing, but whenever you're recruiting players, what, what do you look at? Yeah, specifically, what are you looking for when you're, when you're recruiting players? Well, you look at the talent and the measurables. I, I ignore all the charts. Um, uh, typically, I'm not even aware of them unless someone tells me. Um, I, uh, you know, we look, we look at their talent base. We look at, uh, uh, you know, what they can do within the scheme that they're asked to do and then how we project them in what we're going to ask them to do. And then the other thing that I think is often overlooked is is uh, toughness and their commitment to playing football. You know, just because the guy's really talented, you know, toughness and real uh, commitment to being a great football player, I think is important. And I think it's, uh, it's really undervalued too. And our last one will be John. Mike, uh, you mentioned on, on Saturday that this is like the third program that you've taken over. And obviously, you know, when you take over a new program, there's a lot of, you know, adjusting and, and all that stuff. Um, how would you kind of compare this experience of taking a program over to compared to your, your other few and, and how is this one different? Uh, generally it's typical. The biggest difference would be, um, all the distractions with regard to, you know, uh, uh, the lack of spring, uh, uh, diminished, uh, the diminished, um, uh, off season and then the stop and start as far as, uh, what we're able to, uh, to do. And, uh, you know, really communicating and getting to know a team and uh, identifying who can do what and, you know, all those things. Because, you know, anytime you're trying to execute something, you have to choreograph and football 11 guys. And, uh, you know, that's where it gets tough is because it requires a, a number of reps. And that's, you know, that's the thing is, uh, but, uh, you know, it's all, it, it's always been uh, tough when you start. And then there's, uh, there's always a, uh, uh, you know, a core that uh, buy in that'll uh, develop and grow into great players. And there's uh, a certain number that don't. And uh, generally, we, uh, generally speaking, we wish them the best and, um, and uh, you know, go on and get guys that uh, buy into what we're going to do. All right. Thank you, Coach Leach. All right. Thanks.